out. Last week's episode, we finally unveiled our big surprise. We bought a school bus. It's a 1989 Crown Supercoach that we decided to convert into an RV. I spent the whole day trying to get the batteries charged, and then Gwendolyn helped me take out all the seats. This week, Heidi and Gwendolyn continue to clean the inside of the bus while I start working on the engine and try to fix our smoking problem. At the end, we'll do a virtual 3D walkthrough so you can see our idea for our layout. It's day two of the bus conversion. Yesterday went much better than expected. I actually got all of the seats unbolted and they're stacked in the back of the bus. I didn't think that was gonna go as easily as it did. So we can actually move on to some other stuff. We're gonna, might even consider trying to get some flooring in this weekend. That was kind of our original plan. And we didn't think we would get to it, but um, surprisingly. So both of the batteries are dead. That was kind of expected. I should have disconnected the cables, but I didn't. Uh, so I'm trying to charge those now and um, I'm gonna try to start it today because one of the batteries is up to 60%. So we're heading back over there right now. Um, I gotta dump the tanks real fast because they filled up. And um, then we're gonna roll out. All right, so we charged uh, one of the batteries up. I'm gonna see if it'll start. I don't know if only having one battery charged will start it. Um, so this might be a whole lot of nothing. Hopefully the engine doesn't run away again. I don't think it will, but it's been sitting for a while, so hopefully not. So here we go. Not charged enough. I need to charge the other battery. It's not enough. Not enough juice to turn it over. Alright, I gotta charge the other battery. So we're charging the batteries again right now. Putting some charge on the other battery, the second battery. Hopefully that'll help. Doesn't seem like they want to go up much past 60%, so I'm thinking it's a bad sell. And one of them, hopefully the other one's okay. And we can just get it started. Um, we need to go. I don't think anybody's going to want these seats. I've asked, reached out to a few people that none of these seems interested. So I think we're just going to have to bring them to a scrapyard or something. But we need to get the bus running so we can go drive over there, wherever that may be, because it would be too many trips in the RV to try to load all these seats up and um, bring them over to wherever we got to dump them. I think there's a dump nearby. Uh, so I can probably do that. Um, I've heard you can bring it to a scrapyard for the metal, but you have to strip all the cushions and everything off, and we just don't really have time for all of that right now. Um, time is more important to us at the moment um, than, you know, 20, I think it's 20 or 30 bucks we get from that steel. Um, I know 20 or 30 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks, but it take a few hours to pull all the cushions off of there. And we still have to go to the dump anyway, so um, let them let them pull it apart and they, they can make the money. So, uh, and another problem we have, we knew we had a flat tire, but it's so flat the, the tire actually popped off the rim. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight again, cause it's close by, and I get a big jack, and try to jack it up and get the weight off of it. And with the weight off of it, I'm hoping I can get it to uh, catch it, you know, kind of seal when I try to put air in it. Um, I've, I've done that with car tires. I don't know, I've never done anything with a big tire like that. You know, like if the tire's kind of off the rim a little bit, um, you just kind of put pressure on it and it might grab. But there's so much weight on the tire right now, I can't, I can't get it to like flatten out and seal. So I'm gonna have to go get the jack and try to jack it up and see, what, see if that works. But I'm gonna try to start this one more time and see what happens. It's been charging for a while, so let's see. Getting better. So the charge is definitely working. Um, it, it's not as it's, it's not as weak as it was earlier. So you know, maybe I know by the end of today, maybe we'll be able to get it up and running. Hopefully, I can go drop these seats off because we really want to start doing the floor. And it'd be nice to get, just get some progress done. Just get the seats out, really, just to get these out. But there's so much room. Do you want to turn the generator off or on? You can leave it on. I'm charging the batteries right now. It has okay. to be on to charge the battery. We're gonna get some stuff to clean up. We're gonna mop. We're gonna sweep real good. We're gonna mop as best we can, clean the walls, get it as clean as we can. And I wanna pull some of this rubber up 
I need to get a, a knife and uh, I need to pull that coping at the bottom off and uh, we'll work through that and see where that takes us and see how far we can get. Because it'd be nice to get a floor in here. Um, you know, most, usually you don't put the floor in until after you get cabinets and walls up because you don't want to put floor under walls. But in this case, I don't, I don't really think it matters. It's such a small space. It's not like it's going to waste a ton of material. The, we did the measurements on it and it's a little bigger than I thought it was. Uh, the, the total square footage of floor space um, all which is in front of the bus, counting the stairs and all, is 270 square feet. So it's not small. It's, it's a lot of space. Um, we lived in um, a little apartment above Heidi's parents' garage for a couple years. And that was like 300 square feet. Um, so it was a little bigger footage-wise, but the walls came up on an angle. It was like one of those barn-shaped things. So the walls kind of came up at a real sharp angle. And you couldn't stand real close to the, to the walls because the way the ceiling was made. So it made it seem smaller than it actually was. And, and honestly, this seemed, it didn't have a lot of windows either. So this seems, this actually seems a lot bigger because of all the windows. And uh, we'll have to figure out how we're gonna seal some of that up because, uh, because of the heat transfer. We might tent a bunch of them, like really dark, and then get some um, that reflective heat material. And then I might even make some little insulation boards that we can put in and just put them in place when, when we are uh, not driving around. Me. Mm -hmm. Will and I are gonna clean the bus because it's really funky. Thirty years of all kinds of nastiness, and now one's taking a nap. And I have a frog in my throat because I still have a cold. I'm gonna mop for mommy in the bus today. When I look up just to see the sky of stars, oh I don't know. find a 8D battery anywhere. These are 4Ds in here, actually. Um, the manual calls for 8Ds, and I talked to some people about it online, and they said um, you can get by with one 8D, and that would work. Uh, I could not find one anywhere, so uh, at least today it's a Saturday, so lots of places are closed. I could probably call Napa, they might have one, but I don't even know if they're open today. I ended up getting two, two group 34s, 800 cranking amps each, cold cranking amps. So it's already set up to wire in parallel. I'll put both of these in. That should be enough to start it. Um, and then once I get an 8D to put in it, I'll just use these as like a house batteries to, um, to run an inverter. And uh, later on, we want to get a solar set up and um, you know, maybe some lithium batteries to run with that. Possibly, we'll have to see. That's going to be a little ways out. Uh, but let me get these set up and then uh, we'll crank this puppy up, see if everything goes well. All right, so I got them installed, and we're gonna try to start it up in a second. Ellen's sleeping, so hopefully it doesn't wake up because this thing's pretty loud. But that's what it looks like. So two batteries, one tray. I already had the parallel wires already set up because it uses two big batteries in parallel. But since I'm not running any of the, um, since we're not running any of the school lights or signals or any of that stuff, I don't think we need the extra capacity, so we should be fine. Yeah. You know, The buzzer is the low air pressure. So the air pressure has to build up in the tank. That buzzer to let you know there's not enough pressure, so you don't try to drive off. You won't have you won't have brakes at all. And Ellen's still sleeping. Yay! Isn't it amazing? It comes with two sponges. Yeah, it's really nice. Take a quick walk and show you what it's doing. So it said that it, the engine uh, ran away. Now, what that means is on these old uh, diesel engines, the old Detroit specifically, um, if oil gets in the intake, like through a leak or something like that, or just idling too long, it'll build up and then the engine can use that for fuel. And the engine will rev, so it'll rev up really high and it can blow itself up. So that happened with this one, but it, they were able to turn it off at the key. And the guy at the, the yard said he thinks it's just an injector. But it's, it is only running on five cylinders right now. It only has six, and it's only running on five. And that's the smoke it's getting. So I gotta figure out which, which uh, cylinder's not running, and I have an injector to swap out for that cylinder, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. If it's not that, if it doesn't work with the injector, if it doesn't work with the injector, then um, it may be a bent valve. Um, 
So I'm hoping it's not that. But we'll see. That's <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Is that cool, brother? Look. Close the door, you push it that way. And hold the door closed. Open it. This is the old injector. Um, I don't know much about these things, um, but the spring pushes in okay. But the tip of it right here, um, the guy at the bus yard said the tip might be blown off, but the tip is still there. But there's, it, it seems like it's fused closed. I don't see any holes in it. I mean, I don't know what they're supposed to look like. Maybe some people can comment on a Detroit diesel. Um, this is a 7G75, this is the injector that came, um, I had the service manual from the bus yard with the specific types of injectors that were in it, and uh, so I knew which one to get. And, um, but, I mean, there's supposed to be holes in this, this is supposed to open, I know it's not supposed to open up, I, I thought, when this is depressed, or, but I don't even see any holes in it or anything, I think it just, it got so hot it just fused it closed. So, we're about to start it up for the first time with the new injector in it, we'll see if it runs, if it's stop smoking and it runs smooth, I guess it fixed it. So we'll find out in a couple minutes. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, here we go, we're going to start for the first time with the injector. Um, hopefully it doesn't run away and blow up on came out of the line when uh, when I changed the injector. So I have to figure that out. We got it. Um, I played with it a little bit. Let the starter engage for a little while. Let the RPMs come up a little bit. And then I gave it some gas and it took. So I just kind of get some I guess I have to get the air out of the uh, fuel line. I'm gonna go see if the smoke in Ellen's not feeling good. I woke up from a nap early. Sounds better. It's not like it's running smooth, but let's see if it's smoking. Still smoking. Hmm. What if we got a bad valve? Okay, everyone, need your help. Leave a comment below if you think the one on the left is smoking more than the one on the right. The one on the left is before I change the injector, the one on the right is after. I did not set the timing on the injector, which can cause smoke. So I'm thinking this thing might actually be working. As you'll see in the video, my initial thought after I started it the first time was that it sounded like it was running smoother. But then when I went back and looked, it was still smoking, so I assumed that the problem wasn't fixed. So if there's any Detroit Diesel folks out there, please just chime in if you think the one on the left is smoking more than the one on the right. Oh, I don't know. for a while and uh, the smoking never calmed down so it's basically still like it was even though there's a new injector in there 
So I'm guessing that means one of the valves is messed up. Or at least I know what cylinder it is. Uh, I guess the next step would be to pull off the head. Um, that I cannot do here. I can drive it like it is, so that's the good news. I can actually drive it to a place to work on it, but I just need to find a place to be able to do that kind of work out here. Because the heads aren't, aren't light, you know, you need like a crane, like a shop crane to be able to lift it. It wouldn't be something you'd be able to do by hand. Um, they're really, really heavy duty parts. So that's our next step, I suppose. I guess we can keep working on the inside for now and just fooling around with that. And then when we're ready, we can uh, either I might I might just bring it to somebody and have them do it. Um, though that will be pretty expensive, I'm sure. I do like to do things on my own, though. I like to I like to figure out how things work, and I'm pretty good at figuring those things out. And calling on resources like the internet really helps a lot, and just people that already know how to do these things. I'll be picking their, picking their brains on it, and um, that would be my next step. So won't be on this trip, unfortunately. Um, we're still smoking, so and I still got that flat tire that I'm gonna have to figure out how to correct that issue. I still have all day tomorrow, so at least I got some stuff accomplished today. I felt like we weren't getting anything done earlier today. We were kind of at a standstill, so we ran and I, I got a jack so I could jack that that one flat tire up just to get the bus more level. I needed to get the pressure off the tire. I was hoping it might reseal when I did that and allow me to put air in it, but so far it hasn't. So I'm filling up the other tires with air right now, and we're gonna close it up and uh, call it a day. And then we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, I got a quick lunch chicken in a second. We finally got to eat dinner at, I don't know what time, it was like 10 o'clock. A um, little disappointed that the engine wasn't fixed by changing the injector. So I got to take the head off, I guess. That is not going to happen this time. We'll have to figure out where we can do that because we can't do it there at the um, storage place. Um, so a little bit of logistical stuff we got to figure out for next trip. Yeah, about to have some dinner. Heidi made up some awesome food. Uh, some fish and chicken salad. And fries, side fries. Chicken. I want my chicken. All good stuff. All right, everybody. So here is our design for the bus. Obviously, the furniture in it, this is a real basic free program called Sweet Home 3D. You can download this online for free and I was kind of bored one night after we bought the bus and I was home sitting thinking about it I decided to try to figure out a layout so I found this program um, I'll put a link to it in the description it's pretty good for free you know it's not bad and it's got this cool little 3d walkthrough which we'll show you in a minute but I just wanted to show you you know a general idea of our layout so you can see that was we even gonna try to get a washer and dryer in there and uh, we'll have a sink a fridge we'll probably actually get a smaller fridge than what I put in here and here's you see the 3D walkthrough starting and um, most of this stuff is just placeholders like a couch it's not gonna look like this couch the the table and chairs is gonna be our um, sitting area you know for a dinette and we have like the wood burning stove and bunk beds for the kids and here's our little bathroom you know obviously you're not gonna have sky blue tile but who knows maybe we will this is by all means 